My name is Harriet. I was a family carer for 12 years looking after both my parents and my mother had dementia. After that role ended, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and I knew I wanted to get back into the workplace. So after rooting, after thinking about it, I decided that the best thing to do would be to go into the caring role as a, a healthcare assistant. So with that in mind, I did a bit of investigation and I discovered the back to education allowance, which would allow me to do that. And then I went to our local college and uh, the Bray Institute of Further Education and they were doing a healthcare assistant level five qualification and I decided to enroll for it. And I was delighted when I got accepted. I was the oldest person in the class, old enough to be their mothers, but anyway, I didn't let that bother me and I went hell for leather. And I studied hard day and night. It became a challenge, a real, and what better way to do it than for yourself? Carers do so much more for other people and this was for me now. And I really enjoyed every minute of it. I got seven distinctions and a merit and I was student of the year that year, believe it or not. And then I was armed with all the qualifications I needed to go out in, back into the workplace. So I think carers that are at the moment caring need to think ahead. What are you going to do with your life when your caring role ends? I really think that I should have had a care plan in place for myself for the after caring. What am I going, what was I going to do? And with that in mind, I should have done a lot more courses. Um, you could do them at night online when you're, the person you're caring for has gone to bed. Or if you get a window of, of opportunity when a carer comes in to give you a few hours, you could do that. So I would be looking around for something that would suit you and to plan your life because you may not, you may not think, and I didn't either think that it was ever going to end, but it actually does. And it can happen so abruptly. So if you have a plan there, at least you have something to fall back on. And it's like an insurance policy for you yourself, just for you. And you're entitled to that. So I always thought through my caring role, I kept a few things in my mind. And one was the best has yet to come. And I will live before I die. So do something for yourself. It's not being selfish. And you're not going to take from your caring role, but you do have to think of you also. And that's my advice. Caring for someone with dementia can be really, really hard. Um, in the case of a parent, uh, you're actually watching the person who you relied on melting away before your very eyes. <clears throat> and it does take its toll. It's emotional. It's very hard. And when you're caring for someone with dementia, there is no payoff. If you're caring for someone that's sick, they're going to get better. But with caring for a person with dementia, that's not going to happen. So it does take its toll. But you, you always seem to get the strength from somewhere. And especially when you look behind, there's no one there to take your place. You just kind of build a bridge and get over it. No matter what, you have to. So I think that all that... Uh, stuff that you gain over those years that you're looking after that person can come in so handy when you get your own life back because realistically speaking you are giving up your life to look after this person okay you rush in the emotional part of it drags you in but it's only when you're there you realize the losses that you've put your own life on hold that your friends kind of vanish. Okay, they're there for a while and they ring you and say, you're going here, you're going there, but they vanish. So you are kind of flying solo. So you've given up a hell of a lot. And then when the person that you loved dies, that's another loss. So I felt the time had come then for me to live my life. And I felt like I was like a butterfly bursting out of a cocoon. Okay, it may sound bad, but I had a kind of a sense of freedom then. Now, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but it was just like, 
okay, I'm really sad because I've lost that person. I'm really scared because I don't know what I'm going to do with my life now because that was morning, noon, evening, night, breakfast, dinner, tea, supper, medication, toilet trips, going to the doctors, doing everything. And then all of a sudden it stops. So you're going, oh my God, where do I go from here? But then when you get a bit of time to chill out and get your act together, I decided to go back into caring got my qualifications and you know it's just amazing I feel so good about what that I number one I was able to do that role and carry it out to fruition number two that I had the strength that I had gathered over them years to imagine having the strength to go back into education and to gain a qualification and then be able to go into a person's home as a carer which is a, a very privileged position to be in it's just amazing. And now I know that I can go and help someone who was where I was at way back then. And I'm telling you, my, when I go into someone's house and I see that person smiling when they see me, and not only that, the family member smiling, and they trust me to walk away and leave me with their home, with their most precious asset, the person that I'm caring for, they trust me. And I mean, that's payback enough. I mean, that's just amazing. So I am living and I'm enjoying my life and I love what I do. And I'm so okay, it was daunting. And my God, sometimes I felt like running the opposite direction and never stopping. But my goodness, the amount of experience that I have gathered over them years, the amount of things that I've had to do, unbelievable. Like if you think of looking after your own body. You're doing that for another person and maybe two. So it's just incredible that then you can use those skills to bring you forward into your own life and employment. So I think it's just amazing.